Hi, I'm Jerry Tartalino with RetroZone Inc. The purpose of this training film is troubleshooting uh, of our Air Zone flex damper based systems. These systems have been sold since about 1986. Every system ever sold is still fully serviceable. Uh, but it is a system that requires a little bit of explanation. Uh, once you understand how it works, it's a very simple system. We're going to go over the components as well as a new test kit, the AZ test kit that we're now offering for about $29, which makes it very easy to troubleshoot these systems. In fact, everyone that has one of these systems should have one of the troubleshooting kits. We're going to go over how to use it and how the system uh, works. First, just an overview of the components. Every system is going to have a pump. Usually this pump is hanging on the wall. In this case, we've just got it set on these boxes. Uh, this is the solenoid panel and pump. It contains a couple of electric to pressure solenoids, and that's how the pump, uh, that, that's how we switch either vacuum or pressure out to the field dampers. This is one of our rectangular dampers that is under pressure, which would cause it to inflate in a rectangular duct and to shut the airflow off. This is a round six inch that's not installed in a duct. If it were, I have a section of flex duct here. We could install it in this section of flex duct, pops into place, that's what it would look like actually put into a duct. Right now, we have one of the solenoids energized, that typically puts it into pressure mode, causes it to inflate. The one without the light on is de-energized, that's this damper, which puts it into the suction mode and causes it to deflate and of course let airflow pass. Now, the, 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 the major components of the system are simply the dampers, the pump that I briefly talked about. That pump has got a couple of relays in it that are uh, tied into the equipment side of your heating and air conditioning unit. It's all low voltage, but it does tie into the fan and to the furnace circuit, so the pump only runs when the heating and air conditioning equipment uh, is running. The pump's running right now. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but it is very quiet. It's a vibration style pump that provides both pressure and vacuum. Now, the pump again goes to the solenoid switches. The solenoid switches switch the pump from either vacuum to pressure. Typically, the vacuum line runs to the bottom set of the uh, ports on the switches. The, uh, the pressure side tends to run to the top side, not always though, it can be configured differently for a normally open or a normally closed damper, but we'll leave that to another, another subject. Now, what happens when you have one of these systems and all of a sudden something's not working? Typical failure modes are not with the dampers, the six inch damper in fact has a cycle life of about three 300 to 600,000 cycles, which is better than actually most mechanical uh, dampers. They tend to be uh, very long-lived. Part of the reason for that is, is the uh, dampers, and I'm going to change this over. I'm actually going to change this over so the rectangular damper deflates under vacuum and this inflates under pressure. Okay, You'll see this one go down. You're going to see this one inflate. They only inflate to about a half a PSI of pressure, and that's one of the reasons they last so long. It's not like a balloon where you're stretching or elongating the material. You're simply moving it around. This is a closed one. Now, you may have actually been able to hear the venting because what happens, and this is an important part of this system, once a damper is fully inflated, the excess airflow is vented out of this pressure relief valve. There's one of these per system. They're directional. If you take it out, you need to make sure you get it back in the right way. But that's how this works, and that's why this system is not affected by small leaks. You can actually take an ice pick and poke holes in these dampers, and they'll continue to work, right up to the point that there are so many leaks that the pump can't keep up with them. But uh, it's an extremely simple system, very reliable. There's also a vacuum relief. You can tell it because it has got a foam filter on it. That's how air actually gets back into the system. Now, what happens if you've got a system, you're looking at it, you're not sure what's working and what's not working? This is where our new test kit really comes into play. 
test kit, it's an airflow meter from Dwyer. It's got a few extra pieces of tubing and a plug and some parts just to make this easy to do. The most, uh, the most service oriented part of this system is the pump. The pumps tend to last anywhere from four or five years to 10, 12. We have some out still going after 15 or 16 years of operation. So the first thing we're gonna check with the pump is we're going to go check the pressure side. I'm going to disconnect where the pump ties into the, into the solenoid panel. I'm now gonna take that using my tubing kit. One of them is an adapter to take the larger tubing down to the smaller tubing. This, uh, this, this Dwyer flow meter has got two ports on it, bottom port for pressure, top port for vacuum. We are checking pressure now. There's a little ball in here. I'm not sure if you can see that, but when we, when we hook this up to the pump and then hold it vertically, we can see that the ball has gone up to about 14 square cubic feet per hour. This is a good pump, it's a brand new pump. That's the output of it. You can easily see what it's putting out. That's a pump that easily passes. Anything over seven or eight, in fact, is a good number for this system. So we verified that the pump is, in fact, putting out the flow that we want it to put out. Can, you, can we actually see the ball in there? Okay, good. Now, we're gonna, we're gonna reconnect that. And we're going to disconnect the vacuum side and test it. Same way, the vacuum side is actually the bigger tube going into the side of the pump. For this, we want to use the top port. And once again, I think you can see the ball picking up. It's running about 10 or 12, also a very good number. Anywhere around 5 or better on the vacuum side is a good number. We've now verified that pump. We know it's a, it's a good pump. And that's where I would say a great majority of the problems are going to be right there. Pumps are easy to replace, they're relatively inexpensive, so most times that you encounter a system and it doesn't seem to be working right, um, that's what it's going to be. Now again, this system was sold under the name Interzone or Interzone Systems Corporation starting at about 1986 all the way to 1999. After 1999, same system under the name of RetroZone or RetroZone Inc. Website is RetroZone.com. If you will look under technical resources, you will find various videos and other aids in terms of hooking pumps up and, and that sort of thing. So I want to make sure we mention that. Uh, these systems are still completely serviceable. So. We verified the pump. Now let's go over here to actually the zone output tubes. The one with a red light on, we know that it is in the pressure mode. That's this round one. So I'm going to pull that off. I'm going to find my tubing and I'm going to connect the flow meter to the outgoing port. And here we can see that we have virtually the same flow, about 13 or 14 square cubic feet per hour. So we know we're getting generally our full flow through the pump, through the solenoids, and out to that zone port. So now, if we weren't, if we almost saw no flow at this point, yet we knew our pump was good, about the only component to then be suspect of is in fact the solenoids. If the solenoids begin to stick to where they're not going fully up or fully down, then they'll simply sit there and bypass air in a circular mode. That's something to watch for. The solenoids are extremely reliable, but it can happen. And you can either replace it at that point, or you can put a good squirt of silicone, 100% silicone lubricant. You really don't want to use anything else, but try some silicone lube in there. A lot of times they will come back to life and then work for many more uh, years after that. So uh, that's what we're going to do. Same thing out here. This one's in the vacuum mode. Again, using our tubing setup, we can connect to the side pulling vacuum. 
again hooking to the hooking to the top port because we're actually now pulling the ball up with vacuum again we see a good reading so this system is really checking out nicely at this point it's brand new it should check out nicely let's hook our dampers back up and let's take a look at one other part of this let's let's see I'm not gonna I'm not going to hook up the round one just yet. I'm now going to check the pressure relief. Now again, the way this system works is that when a damper fully inflates, the excess pressure starts dumping out the pressure relief valve, which keeps it at about a half a PSI, and then the excess air will start dumping out of this valve. If it never starts dumping out of this valve, well then you can bet it's going to be a leak downstream in the tubing, a connection, uh, a damper or or whatever and I'll just show you we'll take a look at how that how that looks so I'm gonna hook up our meter now which is a different size tube I'm gonna hook it up to the bottom port of our test meter and then I'm going to I'm gonna reconnect now what you're gonna be you're gonna see two things the damper is going to be inflating Right now there's no air coming through this meter, but as soon as the damper is substantially inflated, then the excess air is going to start bypassing out of the system through that pressure relief valve and we can see the ball moving up on the test instrument. That's, that's normal operation, but you may have 10 or 12 of these dampers tied together on a zone and you may have to give it a little bit of time to where you know that they're fully inflated before you expect to see this air bypassing. Okay? Now, the, the old way of doing this was, I want to point this out, it's actually very possible on these dampers since they only use about a half a PSI. If you don't have the test instrument, it's actually, frankly, very easy to blow these things up to about a half a PSI, which is about what we can comfortably do with our lungs. Now, as you would expect, they'll just get to a point where they won't take any more air. But if you have a circuit and you continue to try to inflate them and inflate them and they just keep bleeding down and keep bleeding down, another that's another good sign that you've got a leak in the system and it's time to go track that particular circuit down. Um, it's important if you have a three or a four zone system that you only have one in the pressure mode. Uh, it, it's, it's important to understand that these circuits, if you have two in the vacuum mode, well they're interconnected so you could have a leak over on one circuit but you might think it's on the other circuit. So that's what the plug is for, is to basically plug off all the circuits that you're that you're not using and isolating it just down to, to one. But there's the flow meter, that's how you use it, you just work through the system and you can really get down I think very quickly to what and where the problem is if you have one. Again, these systems are fully serviceable. All parts are available. We're RetroZone.com. We're in Parker, Texas. Our phone number is 972-633-8104. Uh, email is support at RetroZone.com. If you have an issue, you might try emailing us. We'll be happy to work with you on these systems. All parts are available. RetroZone.com. Thank you for your time.